Hasn't it been wonderful to have preludes from our friends around the world and different scripture passages that we've been able to have from some of you, our students and faculty, uh, even though we're not able to gather together. So thank you to Erika Mine in Japan with her siblings in sharing with us in Japanese, I'd rather have Jesus. And now for this passage of scripture uh, that Constance Cherry and Jeff Barker put together. Um, thank you. Thank you to all who are participating from afar. In this passage that Constance read, Isaiah assures us that each one of us is precious to the God who created us and formed us, that God loves us, calls us by name, and has made us for his glory. We're honored in God's sight and assured of God's presence. God is present right now with you where you are somewhere in the world and with the few of us gathered here at IWS. God is always present and at work. Isaiah's words of confidence are essential for us. But Isaiah has another message for us from God besides that we are created and loved by God. Do not fear. Because I love you, because I have redeemed you, you do not need to fear. I am present, God says, even in the midst of the worst disasters, in the midst of the ashes of life. Do not fear. God assures us that we don't need to be afraid about what will happen to us, that even if we're called to walk through the fire or through the deep waters, that God's presence and help are certain. Emmanuel Bilea and his wife Juliana rested in this assurance. The mention of the Lord's presence and protection in the fire reminds us of the story of the three sons of Judah, who, though they were cast into the Babylonian furnace because they would not bow or bend to worship an idol, they were preserved in the fire by the presence of God. And the passage also, the Isaiah passage also is full of images of the exodus from Egypt. The statement in verse 3, I am the Lord your God, would have reminded every Jewish reader of Exodus 20, where this divine description is followed by the words, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So remembering and learning from this past event, the Israelites could rest in God's promise to bring them again into their own land, the promised land. The same goes for us. Learning from past events is a way that God forms us spiritually and enables us to trust God and not fear the pandemic, the weather, or decay, or death. This is what Bob Weber might have called ancient future trust. Learning from the past to trust God now and in the days to come. Author and artist Kevin Van Hooser noted that Christians have a responsibility to live lives of solemn joy and trust, acknowledging both present pain and future hope. Our Isaiah passage, yes, reassures us that we're created for God's glory. And then as we heard proclaimed yesterday in Isaiah 61, God said that he would give beauty for ashes or beauty from brokenness for God's glory. A few years ago in IWS Chapel, I shared about the ancient Japanese art that is a meaningful picture of this biblical concept of beauty from brokenness. Kintsugi. Kintsugi, the art of mending broken pottery with lacquer mixed with gold. It sees breakage or repair as a part of the history of the object rather than something to disguise or hide. The idea is that the mended object becomes more beautiful and more valuable in the mending. Beauty from brokenness or decay or catastrophe. Now when I mentioned Kintsugi then, I didn't tell you about my own story of a broken vessel. A friend had created a pottery Eucharist chalice and plate 
for me and sent this photo of what was being shipped to me. But when it arrived, the chalice was in pieces. Understandably disappointed and grieving my loss, I then noticed that the lines that had emerged when the pottery was fired were reminiscent of this art of kintsugi, and I had the idea to mend the piece myself. Well, it took me three years to get up the courage to uh, take on that task. I finally ordered a kintsugi kit from Japan so that I'd have real gold lacquer with which to do the mending. Working with an artist friend, I prayerfully held the pieces in my hands as the lacquer dried and had a profound sense of what it is like for God to hold me in his hands as my brokenness is being mended by love, grace, and forgiveness. The chalice is mended and to my eyes more beautiful and full of meaning than it was before. Such a meaningful paradox that incredible beauty comes from great brokenness. There are, however, and I didn't bring a picture of this, but the backside of the chalice when it was mended, pieces where chunks of places where chunks of pottery could not fit back into the crack that was made in the breaking of the chalice. Pieces that are lost, never to be recovered. Just like real life, we all have pieces or people that are irreplaceable or that just don't fit back into the cracks as we are being mended. But that doesn't keep the chalice from being beautiful and able to be used as the vessel for the Eucharist at my church. And it doesn't keep God from being able to use us for kingdom glory and the building of the church. And once when I was in Colorado, I found this lovely necklace, a decaying aspen leaf that had been dipped in gold, in a sense, even celebrating the decomposition. Another fine example of the paradox that beauty can come from decay. Do we celebrate and treasure God's work of redemption in our own lives? Do we even notice it? God is always present and at work in our lives. Our task is to become aware of God's presence and what God is doing in our lives and in our world, to become aware of how God wants to mend our brokenness and to use us to help others' brokenness be mended, bringing beauty from ashes. In a 19th century hymn called Beauty for Ashes, J.G. Crabb has written this in one of the verses. I sing the love of God, my Father, whose spirit abides within, who changes all my grief to gladness and pardons me all my sin. Though clouds may lower, dark and dreary, yet God is promised to be near. God gives me sunshine for my shadow and beauty for ashes here. God gives me joy in place of sorrow, love that casts out fear. God gives me sunshine for my shadow and beauty for ashes here. It isn't that God wants to cheer us up when we have problems. It's that God is our hope during trials. Even if we have to wait for heaven to find ultimate relief, God is present with us now, encouraging us, forming us for his glory, and often giving us glimpses of God's glorious self. In our journey through life, may we come to understand St. Augustine's words, In my deepest wound, I saw your glory, and it dazzled me. In my deepest wound, I saw your glory, and it dazzled me. I'd like to close today using a lovely prayer from a book called Centering Prayers. Let's just pause in silence for a moment before and after this prayer. Let's be still.
ministering Spirit of God. Help me remember that I come to you. I come from you and return to you. And in between, I'm invited to grow in love. I wish to feel your grace attending to me through the places of my brokenness, inviting me deeper into your love. Amen.